Welcome to the Daily Word, verse by verse. Grab your Bibles and follow along as we study the book of Revelation. Keep in mind, I am using the Holman Christian Standard Bible, so if you're using a different translation, the read is different, but the message is the same. Okay, we're going to pick up our study in chapter 14. And remember, these are parenthetical uh, studies or revelations. Uh, we're in the midst of the seven-year tribulation period. This is known as the day of the Lord, this time which God is judging mankind for his wickedness and their ungodliness. Now, what is also going on is the kingdom of the Antichrist or the beast or the man of sin. And that during the last three and a half year period of this seven year period, things really ramp up. The beast becomes more wicked and more evil. But God's judgments also ramp up in their severity. We also see the blood shed against the people of God, those who refuse to bow to the beast and take its mark. Uh, they're going to be martyred. And really that's going to be the price for not embracing the beast and more so taking the mark. Um, I just want to be <laughs> sometimes these uh, Christian movies get it so wrong because they make it seem like during this period of time that there are people who are like in between and that uh, the, 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 the purpose of the um, people of God during that time was to be to take down the mark. No, it's not that. No, you're not going to be able to take it down because as we see, God is already project, uh, predicting this is going to happen. So if a Christian was to come along during that time to think now my mission is to take down the beast you're fighting against prophecy if you kind of silly enough to think you can win secondly um, there's it's going to be so much blood uh, shed because of that you, you you're not going to fake a mark you're not going to fake your faith the price for not receiving the mark you're going to get you're going to be executed plain and simple all right, chapter 14, verse 1 says, Then I looked, and there on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him were 144,000, who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. Now, of course, remember, we were introduced to the 144,000 in chapter 7. And back then, he broke it down and said that they were, uh, these individuals were uh, from the um, 12 tribes. There were 12,000 from the 12 tribes tribes of Israel who at that time obviously God is going to make them aware aware of what tribe they're from but we're going to get some additional information about them because he brings them up now the reason why he's bringing this crowd up is because they have now came through the tribulation with great tribulation and martyrdom and this is what he says about them verse 2 I heard a sound from heaven like the sound of cascading waters and like the rumblings of loud thunder. The sound I heard was like harpers playing on their harps. They sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders, but no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. Now, again, if you know any Jehovah Witnesses, then I'm pretty sure most pe most of us do. If you ever ask them about this verse of scripture right here, path of the scripture, they will dance around it because it obviously uh, denounces their view of what they say the 144,000 is, which is the chosen people of the uh, of the um, Jehovah Witnesses. Um, verse four says, "These are the ones who." These are the ones not defiled with women, for they kept their virginity. These are the ones who followed the Lamb wherever He goes. They were redeemed from the human race as first fruits for God and the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. So these guys would be exemplary in their walk and their witness to the Lord. Notice they were not only Jews, male Jews, but they were virgins, in other words, they didn't get married at the time. And by the way, this is something totally different than what the Catholic Church imposes on their priests. 
Um, the, the circumstances and the times here uh, were very extreme. But nevertheless, they were virgins. And by the way, this is interesting when we get into some of the, 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 the sinfulness of the kingdom of the Antichrist or the beast, where the opposite sexuality or sexual sins, uh, blasphemies, idolatries, all of these greed, all of these things, they are witness during this time of what the world is not. The world is at the other extreme to the point of even worshiping Satan and the beast. Um, the bloodshed, like I say, the total abandonment of any values. They witness, they are a witness to these values. All right, verse 6 says, Then I saw another angel fly high overhead, having the eternal gospel to announce to the inhabitants of the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. Now, this is an astonishing thing here. During this seven-year period, and we have to keep in mind that, uh, like the witness, the two witnesses in the 11th chapter who witnessed during this time, and they witnessed what these two, the two witnesses um, have unlimited power. Remember, they smite the earth as they see. God gives them this power. And what is interesting is that the extreme darkness, the extreme wickedness of this generation, those who live during this seven year period, God also gives an extremely strong witness. Um, and so here we see these angels who fly through the air giving this witness. Now, if you remember, what was amazing, I guess the bigger question could be um, when they make this proclamation, will the people of the earth hear it and understand it? And I say that for this reason. God spoke to heaven, from heaven, on three occasions during the uh, ministry of Jesus. Once at his baptism, another time uh, on the Mount of Figuration, and then there was another time in the 12th chapter of John, he spoke from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, I'm well pleased. Now, in the case of the, um, the last time he spoke, people heard it, they just didn't know what they heard. Some said an angel spoke to him, another said it thundered. I'm under the impression that people will understand these angels, they just won't care. We're gonna see that in the 16th chapter, that the hardness of the heart would be so great they just won't care. And what is interesting is that, of course, now God is now giving this witness. And I know I have friends who are not Christians. And we kind of get in these debates periodically. And one of the most frequently um, questions or comment is, well, how come God doesn't just speak from the sky? Right? How come God doesn't just speak from the sky and tell everybody to repent? Well, he's doing it here. And they won't repent. And we're going to see that even more. Uh, verse 7. He spoke with a loud voice. Fear God and give him glory. Because of His, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship the maker of heaven and earth. The sea and the springs of water. Now. Interesting he said that. We're going to see in chapter 6. Where God is going to attack the uh, water streams. The water sources. So again, people often say, if, why won't God speak from heaven? He will, but they won't. Verse 8, a second angel followed, saying, It has fallen, Babylon the great has fallen, who has made all nations drink the wine of her sexual immorality, which brings wrath. Now the sexual immorality here is including all kinds of lewd sex, but the, the imagery is how people are so willing to engage, okay, with this Babylon. And I'm going to save, of course, the details uh, when we get to chapters 17 and 18 because, again, John devotes two chapters to uh, what this Babylon is. Um, all right, I'm going to pick this up at verse 9 and, and finish off this chapter in the next video because there's some things I want to talk about in terms of judgment, how severe these judgments are coming and what these judgments are going to be. Um, how serious the eternal judgment, the seriousness of turning away from God, rejecting God, not obeying the gospel. All right, I'll pick it up in 
uh, verse 9 in the next video. I'll see you then.